Hey everybody, I know it's been a minute. My life has been crazy. However, I have been reading some amazing books. So today I'm here to wrap up my May reading and tell you all about them. I cannot wait, so let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three. Today I am here to wrap up my reading. It has been a while since I've talked to y'all because, let me just tell you, my life has been insane. Work has been out of control, but most importantly and most excitedly, I guess that's the word I'll use today, um, I got to see my parents. I have not seen my parents so since January of 2020, but we are all fully vaccinated and they had taken a road trip to see my grandfather. And so they were coming on back through, they stopped for the night, we had an amazing dinner, had breakfast, and I got to hang out with them for a little bit. And it had been a long time. I think it was the longest in many years that it had been since I'd seen my parents. So that was really, really exciting. However, that means no videos, but today I'm here to fix that. Today I'm here to wrap up my May reading. So, as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order a book or two from your local independent bookstore, or if you're a library user, get them to order a copy for you as soon as possible in whichever format that you like to read. So let's get started. The first book I want to tell you about is A Lonely Man by Chris Power. I really, really liked this literary thriller. This is the story of Robert. Robert has moved with his family to Berlin, his wife and his children, um, in order to sort of finish his second novel, sort of get inspired. Um, and he's having a really hard time. He's got major writer's block and he can't really figure out, can't be inspired, can't get his narrative going. He meets Patrick, who is also a writer who like ghost writes other people's autobiographies with them. And he um, meets Patrick and it turns out Patrick is on the run. He was hired and commissioned to write a, a book with a Russian oligarch, and that man has committed suicide, and now he feels he's being chased. And what happens is, as Patrick tells his story, Robert starts to appropriate that story into a novel. Well, then the thriller aspect comes in. Is Patrick really being followed? Is Robert and pa Robert now being followed? Are they being followed together? Is there danger there? What happens when Patrick finds out, or if Patrick finds out, that Ro uh, Robert is stealing his story? Um, this book is, um, it is a fun, fast read. You're really bought in. It's sort of an interesting take on the literary thriller and it is it, I really enjoyed it I think that it's a fun summer read and I think you all will really like it so that's a lonely man by Chris Power this is out from FSG and you can get your hands on it now it came out in May here in the United States okay the next book I absolutely actually I adored a lot of these, but this one is very, very, very good. And that is Secret of Happiness by Joan Silber. This is out from <clears throat> Counterpoint Press. And this actually just came out last month as well. And I'm sorry, there's quite a glare on that cover because of its beautiful gold foil. Um, I read Improvement by Joan Silber when it came out a couple years ago, and I absolutely loved it. And if you are a fan of one of, of those books that are sort of these interconnected short stories that wind up making an entire narrative... The, she's the writer for you. Her last two books are very much that, and they are both excellent. So this book's premise starts with the story of Ethan. Ethan is, um, his life is totally rocked when he finds out that his father, who was a traveling salesman, a person in um, production who often went to Asia, um, and finds out that his father had an entire family, a, um, another a wife, and children um, that he had brought over from, I think it's Taiwan, back to America. And he they find this out 
um, late, late in life. And it causes all sorts of havoc, as you can imagine. And what winds up happening is that his father winds up getting very sick, Ethan's father, and winds up moving in with the other family because, because as you can imagine, Ethan's mother is not too happy about this. And he winds up getting ill and he winds up passing away. Not a spoiler. It's fairly soon in the beginning of the book. But then what Joan does is she takes each section of the story from a different person's perspective that you'll meet in the previous story and sort of continues a dialogue about how interconnected everybody's lives are, even when they don't think that they're connected in any shape or form. So how one of your actions with one interaction with another person can really form a moment for them or can change a decision. And all of these stories connect together until Joan Silver does an amazing job of getting us back and bringing it all home. Now, this is one of those books you can't really tell the story or the plot because you want to sort of watch it evolve, but you will love it. Joan Silver is also an amazing writer, some very poetic writing, some great characters, and you really will love this. I absolutely adored it. So that is Secret of Happiness by Joan Silver. This is out now by Counterpoint Press. Improvement won the Penn Faulkner and the National Book Circle Award when it came out. So high praise, reader. She's amazing. Get your hands on it. The next book was the April book choice for the Spilling Tea Book Club that my friend Ryan and I read, uh, run, and that was Amy Tan's The Hundred Secret Senses. This was a very good book. This is the story of two sisters. Um, there's a theme going on here of families that people didn't know. But so this is set in two places. So it's set in San Francisco, which is very close to where I live, and we meet Olivia. Olivia finds out late in life that, um, late in her teenage life, I'm sorry, um, that she has an older sister that she did not know. Her father had had a child before he left China and she, um, her father passes away and Quan, her sister, winds up coming over for China and actually living with her mother and her. And this story is all about their relationship. Now, Quan um, believes that she has the ability to talk to dead spirits. And that sort of becomes part of the narrative as well. But what this book is really about is this sort of search for the relationship between Olivia and Quan and how is it going to work out. Olivia is not always a likable person, but they wind up, Quan, uh, sorry, and Quan is completely dedicated to her sister. And um, Olivia has issues with her relationship. She has issues with herself. Um, she has issues with her parents. She just is a very, she struggles very hard to connect to people. So Quan sort of tricks her and her husband, I believe his name is Simon, to do this, uh, um, tour of China's food world, and they're going to write an article for a magazine. And Quan takes Olivia back to where she came from, from this little town in China, and we sort of start to get this story. The other part of this is that Quan continues to tell Olivia stories about her past lives and relationships that she had in the past in these past lives. And we get another story about this tiny town in China and how it was influenced by um, Christians coming in and trying to um, convert the people and all the relationships at that period of time. And so the stories start to interwine. I really enjoyed this book. I think Amy Tan has a very readable style and the characters, though not always likable, were very, very interesting and well-developed. So I really liked The Hundred Secret Senses by Amy Tan. And um, yeah, you can see what Ryan and I thought about it in our video um, where we did our book club talk on it, if you would like to. Okay. Next is one of my most anticipated thrillers of 2021 because I absolutely loved The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides <clears throat> that came out a few years ago. And it was one of my the best thrillers I've ever read. And he has a new book coming out and it actually comes out on June 15th and it's called The Maiden. So I want to really thank Celadon Books for sending me this early copy. I flew through this book. So this is the story of... 
a woman, Mariana. She is a therapist and she does group therapy and her husband has recently died. So she's dealing with that trauma. She gets a call one day from her um, niece. Her and her husband had sort of taken over raising her niece when her niece's parents were killed in a car crash, I believe. Um, and it turns out there has been a murder on the college campus uh, that her niece attends. And it was her best friend or one of her very, very good friends. So of course, Mariana rushes to her niece's side and she meets this very um, enigmatic, um, charming, sort of oddly creepy professor of the classics who has a group of women or young students um, who um, sort of worship him called the Maidens, okay? And what the girl who has passed away or was murdered was one of the Maidens. And Mariana just firmly believes that this professor is the one that killed this girl. So she sticks around. She's sort of convinced to stick around and another murder happens and it sort of starts to snowball. But there's all these indications in her world that this man is the person, the person she needs to find the, the, um, the facts, find the proof that he's the murderer, that things are going on around her that she's not paying attention to. It is an excellent th thriller. Like, I did not see the end coming. It definitely surprised me. Um, it is a slow build. So the beginning of it is building sort of all the relationships, the past, the school, the history, all of that sort of things. But once it sort of picks up, as Mariana sort of gets on this tear, the book really takes like a, a turn and it is very driven, very fun, very exciting. It's an amazing thriller. So, The Maidens by Alex Michaelides out from Celadon Books. You can get your hands on it as we speak, June 15th. <laughs> so that's not that far away, y'all. That's just around the corner. That's just around the corner. Next is a book that came out at the end of May, I believe, that I devoured. And that is Sorrowland by River Solomon. Now, I read River Solomon's last book, The Deep, and loved it. And so when you read a River Solomon book, you've got to be ready for some just weird, off the wall, brilliant, brilliant storytelling. So in this book, our main character's name is Vern. So at the very beginning of the book, Vern has run away from this commune where this religious, I'm gonna use the word cult, religious cult that she's lived with and sort of been brought up to. She's run away to have children. And she winds up having these children in the forest. Now this is very much set in like modern times. And what happens is she sort of stays in the forest to raise her children. And she is trying to sort of flee this, this religious community that she has been a part of. And what we learn throughout the book is we learn the history of this religious community. It is a group of um, black men and women who have started a group to sort of not have anything to do with white America, with white products, with white power. They sort of um, disdain for the police, all of that sort of thing. And, but are they any better in what they are doing to the people that live on the commune? Okay. But also this is a sci-fi tale because it wouldn't be anything different if River Solomon didn't throw a different curveball at us something is happening to Vern. She's already, um, she's a black woman, but she is also albino. She has issues with her sight, but her body is changing. Her abilities, her physical abilities are changing. And she has her two sons that she has to take care of. Well, she eventually understands that she's being chased and she goes to find her friend, a friend who had fleed the commune. And it turns out she's able to sort of see these visions and I'm not gonna explain them to you because when that sort of came out in the book, I was like, oh, that's weird. That's wonderfully interesting. Um, but let's just say it's sort of like these visions speak to her. But as she sort of continues to change, she becomes less and less of a person. Things get more and more weird. This book takes a weird turn when she's basically running for her life, trying to protect her children. She meets someone has a relationship, but of course 
has to wind up trying to protect them as well because people are after her. And it turns out what's happening to her may have happened to someone in the past. That's all I'm going to say. This book is crazy. It is a like sci-fi thriller, weird, wonderful book. And Vern is a very compelling, frustrating, wonderfully complicated person. And as Vern is changing and becoming whatever she is going to become, you are along for that journey. And and I could it's very cinematic what River Solomon has done here. And it's just a book that I devoured. It is weird, y'all. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is going to be a book that you're not going to be like, what is happening? You absolutely will. And I think that's the point of it all. And as all the pieces sort of come together, it all will make sense. Trust me. I loved it. And the book tackles some big issues and tr just read it. Read it and talk to me about it. That's Sorrowland by River Solomon out from FSG. They sent me this official, uh, this final copy, so I have to say thank you. And just look at how beautiful that cover is. Okay. I could talk about that book with people for hours. It is so complicated and so amazing. Next was a book that we read for my other book club that meets every couple of months, and that is Halsey Street by Naima Coster. This book was everywhere for a while, and Naima Coster wound up winning one of the 35 and Under National Book Award Awards a few years ago as well. And this was her debut novel. Um, Halsey Street is the story of Penelope. Uh, Penelope is a young woman. She is complicated and not always that likable. But what we find out is that she lives in um, Pennsylvania, but she's moved home because her father sort of needs her help. He has had an accident in the past. It sort of has made it very difficult for him to sort of get around and he sort of secluded himself in his house. At one time, he owned a very popular record store in Brooklyn, in the town and around. Um, I can't, I say Brooklyn. Um, it has a, a bed -Sty is the name of the um, community that they live in. And he, and he lost it because of everything that was changing and that sort of derailed him as well. Um, her mother, Penelope's mother, has fled, has left the country. She is Dominican and she has returned to the Dominican Republic and they have absolutely no relationships since they left. And Penelope continues to make poor choices about relationships, struggles to figure out how to deal with her father, and doesn't really know what she wants. She is an art teacher by trade, but she never finished school. So she winds up having a difficult time finding a job, winds up sort of becoming a substitute teacher in a school doing art with children in the community. She moves into this attic of this uh, wealthy white family that has moved into Bed-Stuy and sort of this um, takeover that is occurring. And she moves into the attic with a family and things happen. I'm not going to spoil any of it, but it all just sort of goes back to Penelope's life is a tornado and something winds up happening and she has to return. She has to get in touch with her mother. She wants something for her mother and their relationship sort of flushes out and it becomes sort of more, I don't know, like it's so complicated. Um, her mother's reason for leaving is complicated. Her relationship with her daughter is complicated. But it's really the story of Penelope and Penelope, how Penelope has allowed all of this stuff to form who she is and sort of gives herself the ability to make poor decisions based upon what's happened to her. And is that going to be how Penelope wants to run the rest of her life? Um, this book was good. I think that there's some real talent in here. There's a lot of extra sentences. Like I didn't need some of it, but I was really impressed for a debut novel. Some things were like, it was a lot of stuff thrown in. Let me just tell you. Uh, but overall, I think it's a very, very good, solid start. So that's Halsey Street by Naima, Naima Coster out now from Little A. 
Last but not least is the book that we read for May for our Spilling Tea Book Club, and that is The Price of Salt or Carol by Patricia Highsmith. Um, Ryan and I have not filmed our video yet about this, and we will very, very soon. But this is the story of Therese and Carol. Therese is a young 19-year-old woman in the early 1950s. She works in a store, in a uh, department store. Carol comes in to buy a doll from her, and it is love at first sight. And this is the story of their very complicated, very tenuous, very um, passionate love falling in love affair, if that's the way to say it. Um, Therese is obsessed with Carol. Carol is sort of very cautious about their relationship. And as things go forward, you realize Carol's going through a divorce. She's trying to fight for custody of her daughter. Therese really is in a relationship with a man um, named Richard, I believe. Um, and that's been going nowhere for a very long time. And she is she just knows that Carol is something special. Um, but it is complicated. It's 1952. How do you sort of get all of those feelings out? You have to, you know, you have to be daring, you have to be courageous, but you also have to be very cautious. They wind up going on a road trip together um, and they are being followed because Carol's husband wants full custody of the child. That's all I'm going to say on that. This book is slow moving. It is very much about the tension of those initial relationships. It's very much about how hard it was to know if someone you were attracted to, if you were gay, lesbian um, in the 50s, and how do you make that decision to finally tell that person something, right? Um, and I loved this book. I thought it is beautifully written. I bought into everything. Therese and Carol are not always likable, but they're very real to me. Um, and I absolutely thought it was brilliant. I threw, flew through it. Um, I have only read one other Patricia Highsmith, and I know that most of her books are very different than this book, but I thought this book was beautiful, and it may wind up in my top 10 reads of the year. So that is The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith out obviously now and um i really loved it ryan and i still need to film our video about it but it is soon to come so that is the books that's that is the books those are the books that i read in may let me see if i can get those up there for you all of them every single one of them i'm telling you right now is worth your time they are very very good as always if you are a return subscriber i thank you very very much for coming Thank you very, very much for all your comments and all of your positive words. Um, if you are new to my channel, I hope you like this video and you stick around for more. As always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally. Until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye.